All right. So obviously, even though I mentioned it in my subscriber special video yesterday, there was no poll for this Tuesday toy review this week. There should be one for the next one, unless I think of another character that I really want to do. But yeah, as we see here, uh, today we are taking a look at Fans Project. I think that was the name of the company. Uh, Positum. Yes, I think that was the third party name that they gave to him. And this is the third, the, the, the first third party figure I've been look, I've looked at here on Tuesday Toys Reviews. Uh, so yeah, obviously I wanted to do this guy since I did recently take a look at the, uh, the episode that he's inspired by. City of Steel. So this is the Crocodile Optimus Prime or Alligator. Yeah, Alligator Optimus Prime because he was a Alligatacon. So yeah, let's get into it. Obviously, his jaw can uh, open and close if the camera will focus on him. Hopefully, I really need to get like a kind of neutral background. So yeah, <laughs> he can open up his Jaws really wide if you want to. He kind of looks like he's supposed to be like, there you go. He can almost be like a leg for a, uh, a combiner. That would be interesting to have like a, I don't know. They haven't really done, well, they, they've, they've done beast combiners, but they haven't done one with a crocodile. So that would be cool if there was a crocodile and I don't know, some other characters in a, some kind of combiner. But anyways, so yeah. These back legs can go like that. They can't, oh, they can do like in and out. And they do have little feet. These ones, these are actually his arms. They are a little restricted, but yeah, that's about it for that. And of course, he has his tail here, which can swoosh back and forth a little bit. So yeah, that's the crocodile mode. And since this, this is a repaint of their Skull Cruncher figure. Man, focus, stay focused on the toy here, not the background camera. Uh, since this is a repaint of their Skull Cruncher figure, if we go back here, uh, let's see. There is a certain way you gotta, okay, there we go. Got this one first, then this one. There is, we can take a look at him. There is a little Headmaster Pilot in there. There he is. So we take him out and unfold his legs. There he is. Pretty, yeah. Not really inspired by anything. Not not like the, uh, does his head turn? I don't think his head turns, yeah. For these ones, they did like a little different thing instead of having the them turn on the Headmaster's head. To his legs, uh, only out here, I think. But yeah, kind of limited. He does have like an ab crunch, but that's also part of the transformation. You can see. So yeah, let's get to the transformation. Let's do him first. And instead of going bending this way, that's not how you do it. You instead, if we can see, hold his legs like this and then just kind of scrunch him up and then just straighten out his arms. And then we have the head, which is not an Optimus Prime head. I believe this is a repaint of their uh, Chrome Dome figure, kind of made to look like Optimus Prime. So uh, it kind of does like an okay job, but it would have been nice to have like a new Optimus Prime head for this. But yeah, there's his headmaster all transformed. Let's get to the main body. So we've already completed the first step, which is to open those things. The next step, well, I know the next step is to pull off the tail here. And if we go in here, there is this little, if I can get it out without scratching out paint. There we go. So his tail does become, if you can focus, come on. Come on, camera. His tail does become a sword. He does not come with any sort of rifle 
It would have been nice if he did, did come with a rifle, but come on, camera. He just comes with this kind of alligator tail sword weapon thing. So that's that. Now, on to the figure itself. The first thing we want to do, I believe, is to take the legs here and just spread, spread, spread them apart like that. Rotate them at the kind of below the hip joint here. And then these are actually his kneecaps and you want to uh, do like that. These, I believe you push like that or I know these go back in here. These do, do go back in here, right? Or do they not? <laughs> I just transformed, oh, there we go. That's, that's how we do it. Okay, so we do, it's not in here. It's along this kind of knee joint, which now becomes his kind of ankle joint here. So that's neat. So there, that becomes his foot. And what am I, there's another panel here, right? Oh, is this one here? This one here? No? What am I thinking of? There is another panel here. I know it. Oh, there it is. Okay. So before we put the foot in, there is this panel here, if the camera can stay focused, that we want to take out, then push that in, and then I think it just goes like that. Is that right? I don't know. I think so. Maybe that was supposed to be out for robot mode. I don't know. We'll leave that in for now. It doesn't seem to restrict the... Oh no, it does get in the way. Okay. So we're going to take that out. Sorry. Really? Yeah. There we go. So we're just going to leave that like that. Yeah. We're going to leave that out like that. I think that's how it goes. I probably should have read the instructions before I did this. So yeah, put the leg down here. Oh, take out this very stiff panel here. Push that in. And then on the back, to cover up the hollowness, there is these panels. I do know where these go. They are kind of on this double hinge. So you kind of got to fold them out this way and then have them angled a little bit and then it kind of like fits in and then just goes snug like that. So yeah, there we go. That is the legs. Straighten up the waist like that. And then if you can stand for me, please, while I adjust the camera. There we go, is that level? Uh, that seems to be more level there. Okay. So, for the chest here, I believe we have to go hold the crocodile head down like that, and then we fold these are the arms. It's kind of neat how they had like the shoulders go into kind of the neck. I guess they're also the shoulders of the crocodile, but it kind of forms like more of the body than the shoulders. But yeah, we just basically take the arms out like that. And then the head folds all the way around and it folds on this joint here. And then as you can see, we got the silver here, kind of like his uh, chest girl thing. Then we close those up and that kind of covers some of it. You still get a little bit down here. Has this little bit of yellow here for his crotch that matches the yellow down here. And then we simply straighten out his arms like this. And then I believe, I believe, no. How do we get these out? Yeah. Oh, that's right. We gotta push. It is kind of scary because there is these tiny little ball joints here. The tiny ball joints. Is there a trick to getting these out? No, I just gotta kind of like push around. Okay, there we go. So that is, oh yeah, so he says you have to swivel that part too, okay. So that is one arm. And then 
basically straighten out the other arm. We'll flip this way and then push. This one's easier to do. There we go. So there, <laughs> here he is. That's his arms all done. And now we just take his head and it just plugs in to this. You can see it plugs into that hole there. And it doesn't rotate on the combiner head. It rotates, it has like a little swivel part in here. This is like, okay, now I can't, there we go. So this part here, that's where it like turns and it can look, obviously, you can look down a little bit, but not really up. Unless of course you rotate it around the other way, but then I have a feeling the, if I can see it, I have a feeling the back of his head would collide into his shoulders or whatever, and you wouldn't really get much articulation out of that. Anyways, so if we put him here, adjust the camera once again, so you get a nicer frame shot. There we go. That's pretty good. So there we do. There we go. That is a Positum, aka Crocodile Optimus Prime in robot mode. Now he has a couple of features here on his shoulders. He has these kind of, and these, this is about as far as they go up. So he has these kind of missile pod things molded into his shoulders. Eh, not really, <laughs> not really going to get much use out of that. But yeah, he has, uh, I believe, no, just single jointed elbow here. It does seem like it is double jointed, but it is single jointed. He has obviously all the shoulder articulation you'd think from a ball joint. He has a upper, uh, I guess, bicep swivel. He also has like a lower, like forearm swivel. I guess that's to make up for the fact that there's no wrist swivel. It is weird that it seems like the thumb is like not part of the fist. It feels a little weird. Uh, but yeah, uh, I don't think he has limited, limited waist articulation just due to how it transforms and has the nose of the crocodile mode sticking out there. And like we saw, he has some pretty good uh, leg articulation, mostly due somewhat to the transformation and stuff. Thigh swivel, knee, ankle, ankle tilt. Lots of good art articulation on this guy. Uh, what else? Oh, so if I can get him. Why does he not want? There we go. Straighten out your leg there. Come on, buddy. So he has his weapon here, which you can easily slot into his hand, although it is very stiff and it is very long handle to get in. But there we go. You can see him. There he is. He has his sword weapon. I do like how they kind of try. <laughs> I guess they made this to try and like homage his like axe in G1 and I guess maybe the uh, the movie primes swords because he did have swords. So at least they did that. I do like how they have like the silver paint here and I guess here. So I guess this is supposed to homage his uh, smoked stacks. Oh, I do like how it looks like on the back. He does seem to have <laughs> sort of a rocket pack. So he does kind of have like sideswipes rocket pack from the first. Uh, well, not the first, but the, the third episode of the series. So I think that's kind of cool that he sort of has a rocket pack. Uh, but yeah, obviously yellow from the crotch is these little red bits, which I think are supposed to. Did he have those on his knees in the robot mode? I think they're from the, like the taillights or something that that's maybe that that's what it reminds me of. But yeah, and obviously I think this was a part of the original skull cruncher mold, at least the one that uh, fans project did. So it does nicely match up that he does kind of have the uh, chest windows here and obviously some nice silver paint to homage his uh, the front of his truck cab. But yeah, he's pretty neat. I like him. He's probably out of the two third party uh, 
Crocodile Optimus Primes. I think he is probably the better one, at least color wise. Uh, there is another one by Mech Fan Toys, which came out recently, which is a little less color accurate to uh, how he looked in the show. At least the crocodile mode, it doesn't have the white crocodile head that he did in the show, or gray. I think it was more gray in the show. Here it's kind of white just because of, I guess, how the the molding worked out. But on the Mech Fan Toys, it's like red and blue, which, you know, matches Optimus, but doesn't really match the show. And I think the robot mode, at least on the other Mech Toys one, uh, Mech Fans Toys one, uh, does obviously look more like Optimus. They gave him a Optimus head and an Optimus chest. But yeah, this is still a really good one in my opinion. So if you can find him, I think maybe some places like TF Source might still have him. Uh, I think I did see him go on sale recently at one of, one of those places. So I would check them out, see if they still have him in stock. But yeah, this is Positum, which is a, uh, is it an anagram where you rearrange the, the letters in a word to make another word? But yeah, basically they took Optimus and scrabbled the letters around and named him uh, Positum. So, so yeah, that is my first third party review, uh, Fans Toys Positum.